We're all looking forward to that one, right? Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll catch your attention. It's right? just been fun to say poop all morning yeah, long. Yeah. <laughs> We're teasing ahead to this poop right. story, uh, but it's an important one. So obviously, uh, you know, that's, that'll be an interesting ear catcher right there. That's uh, right. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being with us. I'm Nettie Iranpour. And I'm Evan Irani. Happy Monday to you. Nettie getting a check of the forecast on a cold Monday morning. Yeah, it's cold out there. That's for sure. And check it out. We do have that moon. Uh, it was a full moon last night. Now, it's still considered the cold moon. That's the one that uh, they're labeling this as. Looking at our skies right now, just a few thin clouds, but it's leaving us with pretty clear cold conditions right now. Also, a quick check of traffic, and we do have a few incidents to get to. One in Santee, one way up north in Rainbow. Another one just popped up right there in San Ysidro. So we'll have all those details coming up here in just a few minutes. We'll get into your top story on your Monday morning. Dr. Anthony Fauci says that the Omicron COVID variant is, quote, raging through the world. Tomorrow, President Biden plans to give what his press secretary, Jen Psaki, says is, quote, a stark warning of what the winter will look like for unvaccinated Americans. Even if Omicron ends up causing less severe infection than Delta, the sheer number of infections it could cause could overwhelm hospitals, which would affect people who need care, even if they do not have COVID. And new this morning, Moderna says their COVID booster can provide protection against the Omicron variant. According to new lab testing data, the company's current half-dose booster increased antibodies levels up to 37%. They also found a full booster dose would increase antibodies by 83-fold. Now, that full dose is currently recommended for people with weakened immune systems. Moderna also says it will, work, will be working to develop an Omicron-specific booster. And UC San Diego researchers are warning of what they're calling an imminent surge in COVID-19 cases. Scientists recently found the highest level of Delta and Omicron cases that they've ever seen in San Diego County in the wastewater. Dr. Knight, who is the head of the wastewater program at UC San Diego, says San Diegans should be concerned. People should be very worried about Omicron. The first question is, why do we care about this when people aren't dying? And the key is that they're not dying yet. So Dr. Knight says that wearing a mask indoors and getting vaccinated and a booster shot should be everyone's top priority. Today marks a key deadline for thousands of local families. San Diego Unified set a deadline for eligible students to get their second dose of the COVID vaccine. And this comes as the fight over the vaccine mandate will take center stage in court this morning. We have News 8's Danny Marie McNichol live outside of district headquarters with what families need to know. Good morning, Danny Marie. Good morning, Evan. Well, that's right. I do want to mention right away that this deadline of December 20th is only for students 16 years or older because that's the only age group that has full FDA approval. Now, San Diego Unified School District set this date of December 20th to make sure that students have peak immunity as they return back from winter break. Now, as of today, under an initiative unanimously approved by the Board of Education, all San Diego Unified School District staff and students ages 16 and up will be required to be fully vaccinated against the virus. Students who are not fully vaccinated by today will not be permitted to participate in on site education and would be instead be offered an alternative education program once they return back from winter break. Now, the district did set a deadline for the first COVID vaccination by November 29th and their second dose by December 20th today. The FDA has given emergency approval for COVID vaccinations to be administered in the 12th to 15th age group. San Diego Unified recommends this vaccine for this age group, although it won't be required until full FDA approval is granted. Now, the district is offering medical exemptions to students on a case by case basic basis. Unlike, unlike students, staff are allowed to request religious and medical exemptions. Now, a group called Let Them Breathe will be in court today over a lawsuit against San Diego Unified's vaccine mandate. This motion hearing happens today at 9 a.m. So Let Them Breathe says they are a group of over 30,000 families advocating for mask choice and vaccine choice for students. So let them choose this lawsuit against Sandy Unified argues that district's threat to involuntarily enroll students ages 16 and up who have not been fully vaccinated in independent study on January 24th, 2022, violates students' rights to an in-person education and extracurriculars. So of course, this happens today. They will be in court. We're going to be hearing from both sides. So we will keep you updated on that as the morning progresses. But again, you need to know today, December 20th, 
Students need to be fully vaccinated 16 or older if they'd like to continue in person learning here for the San Diego school districts. Live in San Diego, Dana Marie McNichol. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, today is the day. Thank you very much, Dana Marie. This morning, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says that the Senate will vote on the president's Build Back Better bill, even after losing the support of a key Democratic lawmaker. West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin says that he can't vote for the bill, citing its nearly $2 trillion price tag and its possible effect on inflation. The proposal the proposal includes money for expanded Medicare, prescription drug reform, universal pre-K and climate change. Senator Schumer says that the Senate will vote on it in January. And this morning, Chula Vista police and the community are coming together in an effort to help those in need. Today's the department's holiday meal and toy giveaway. News 8's Chris Guerrero joining us live in Chula Vista. Chris, usually at this hour, you know, the live shots, there's not much going on, <laughs> but you have a lot of action there behind out there. you. <laughs> Look, you, you got to put in the work if you want things to go successfully, right? And the Chula Vista Police Department very much takes this into a special occasion here. This is something that they do every year, something that they love to do to show the love back to the community that they serve. And this is specifically, again, of course, going to those underserved family, those, again, who might be having a, a tough time or maybe those who are unable to fully provide for everything that they would like to do here for the holidays. And so 600 families have been given vouchers or tickets, if you will, the type of tickets you do want to get from the police department to come to this event to have a chance to obviously get some toys for their family, for their kids potentially, but then also more importantly for some holiday food. As we just heard from Chief Roxanna Kennedy, they're going to be handing out turkeys and other holiday items again to make sure that these families have a chance to put on that Christmas dinner this time of year. And then, of course, there will also be a raffle for some of the kids that show up here, a chance for 25 of them to get a bike, a skateboard, a scooter, those really big ticket items that so many kids uh, unfortunately don't have a chance to receive on Christmas Day. So this is going to be an extremely uh, fun event. This is going to be something that will put a lot of smiles on a lot of families and kids and fathers and mothers here in Chula Vista. And after speaking with Chief Kennedy, again, someone who's been here even before we were, before the sun was up, making sure that this would go on successfully. She's incredibly proud of her department, but then also those who stepped up to make this happen in the community. I believe right now more than ever, everybody in the community wants to come together. They want to be unified. We want to help people who truly need to be helped. So I'm pretty proud of the culture of Chula Vista Police Department. We've been doing this back since the days of Ladanian Tomlinson giving thanks. And so we have continued this tradition of making sure that at the holidays we lift up the spirits and let them really see the heart behind the badge in law enforcement. And we're less than an hour away from this getting started. Families already lining up. So, of course, we're going to send things back to you, Evan and Netta. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Netta's getting to check the forecast this morning. It's still a little dark out there and chilly as well. Yep, yep. So right now, the next 30 minutes will be our coldest time of the day. Uh, so hopefully you have those big puffy jackets. Uh, you probably needed them each morning if you were up early over the weekend. You know, we have these dry conditions, and anytime the air is dry, our morning lows get really low, and then our afternoon highs warm up fairly nicely. It was a pretty nice weekend. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, looking at our skies right now, Otai Mountains view out towards the west. You see some of this like wispiness going on. It's making for pink hues across our skies as we wait for that sun to come up 647. This right there is the moon. So our moon's not setting until after eight o'clock this morning. We're going to get the sun and the moon in our skies at the same time. Here's a look at our satellite imagery where you see overall we do have just some thin high clouds, a little bit of a marine layer starting to work its way in. Our wind direction is changing offshore winds. That's what we had throughout the weekend. Now things are going onshore. So that that will lead to more of a marine layer, the clouds that come through. And here's why we do have this area of low pressure right up north. You see the rain that's coming down already into Washington and Oregon. And that's something that's going to bring, you know, our chance of rain here in San Diego, which I will time out for you. Let's show you what's going on right now, though. 35 in El Cajon, 38 in Alpine, 33 in Poway, 32 right now in Escondido. So you are at freezing there uh, in Ramona. I know this has been out, but that's also another freezing spot. 39 degrees for downtown San Diego. Your temperature just dropped. 
dropped one degree. So overall, we are colder this morning than we were yesterday at this time. There is a frost advisory. It's not un, uh, for most of San Diego, except for the east side of our mountains, extending into places like Borrego, Temecula, parts of Palm Springs right now, all under that advisory through 8 o'clock this morning. Here's a check of traffic, and we do have a few things that popped up. So there was a crash way up north in the Rainbow area right on the 15, and that does not look like it's slowing too many people down. But I want to take you to Escondido. This usually gets pretty busy. So there's a stalled car that's on the 15 northbound right where it comes together with the 78. So this usually gets pretty heavy, so that may impact your commute this morning. Hopefully they will clear that quickly. 67 northbound side at Slaughterhouse Canyon Road. This already causing some backups. You see the reds and oranges right there on the northbound side of the 67. And then let's take you down further south right by the border. The 905 the eastbound lane right at La Media Road. There is a crash that they are working to clear. That's pretty close to Brownfield and the port of entry there.